Nine months of grueling competition all comes down to this. 266 days after the green flag waved in Daytona, it's time to crown a champion on the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series season. Four drivers representing all three manufacturers have made it through the playoffs and will compete for a chance to hoist the Bill France Cup. This is your full race preview video of everything to expect for the 36th and final race of the 2020 season, the season finale 500 from the Phoenix Raceway. Let's have a look at our championship four drivers as following the checkers on Sunday, the highest finishing of the bunch will be crowned champion. Eyeing up his second series champion with his first championship round appearance since 2017, driving for Team Penske in the discount tire number two from Rochester Hills, Michigan, this is Brad Kislowski. While not a lot of eyes will be focused on the deuce, this is the team that perhaps enters as a heavyweight favorite. Throughout this season, Kozlowski has wielded the four wins, but most importantly to note, three of those coming on the 750 horsepower package being used this weekend. Another notable factor for this two car is the car itself that will be in use. This Penske chassis was built brand new over the summer as a short track car, and since then, in its only two races, it's won both times at New Hampshire and Richmond. With new crew chief Jeremy Bullins atop the pit box, the team has captured 12 top fives and 23 top tens, with an average finish of 10.3, including an 11th place finish here in spring on a that he led 82 laps. Fresh off of undoubtedly the biggest win of his NASCAR Cup Series career, leading the Bowtie Brigade to the championship four for the first time since 2016, driving into Hendrick Motorsports Napa Auto Parts number nine will be Dawsonville, Georgia's Chase Elliott. Easily the fan favorite pick here for this title is the nine team, and it's not as unrealistic as some may think. This has already been a record-setting crew season for crew chief Alan Gustafson and team, as with four victories, this has been their winningest season together since their pairing in 2016. While two of those wins came on road courses, the package in use this weekend was still in effect for those races, as well as last weekend at Martinsville, where in a must-win situation, Chase got it done. Perhaps the only concerning factor here is Phoenix itself, as in the past two fall races here, Elliott has finished 23rd and 39th with issues. However, here in the spring, the nine team led the way for 93 laps on the way to a 7th place finish. Out of the Joe Gibbs Racing Stable looking to bring manufacturer Toyota their third championship in four seasons and earn his long-awaited first title from Chesterfield, Virginia, and the FedEx ship of on number 11, it's Denny Hamlin. With his fiercest competitor all season long, Kevin Harvick eliminated from the playoffs, based on the numbers, this is your championship favorite. Crew Chief Chris Gabehart has led this team to seven wins this season with an average finish of 9.5 and over 1,000 laps out front. While those numbers are impressive, the concerning part comes in where those wins came at. The smallest track this 11-car victory lane in was the one-mile Dover Speedway. Here in the spring, though, the 11-car failed to take the top spot and finish in 11th place. However, last fall, this team had the momentum as they are the defending race winners. The second dog in this fight for Team Penske comes into double deuce, looking to win his second series title in three seasons, driving into Shell Pencil at number 22 from Middletown, Connecticut. This is sliced bread, Joey Logano. Surely you can't stop hearing enough about the huge two-race head start on the championship race that this team gained for their major round of eight opening win in Kansas. But their advantage goes deeper than that. In this first year with crew chief Paul Wolf calling the shots, this team rolled the two victories in the first four races, hit a bit of a dry spell, but then showed up when it mattered, earning win free of the season out at Kansas. Looking at the numbers, this team has a concerning four DNFs on the year, with a low average finish of 12.1, the lowest of all four championship eligible drivers. The way I see this 22 team, however, is with all those numbers aside, focusing specifically on Phoenix, the track that here in March they led 52 laps at and picked up the victory. This track as a whole has been a strong point for Joey, and in the past three races, he's finished no worse than ninth, as well as leading over 50 laps in the past two from the Arizona desert. Now let's have a look at your TV schedule for the final race of the NASCAR Cup Series season to season finale 500. With all your racing action going down on Sunday, November 8th at 3 p.m. live on NBC, it's the season finale 500. And now here's a look for the final time this season at your 39 driver NASCAR Cup Series entry list. For Starcom Racing, capping off his rookie season, driving into Creek Enterprises' double zero Chevy, this is driver Quinn Half. Then for Tip Ganassi Racing, he drives into Monster Energy number one, this is the outlaw Kurt Busch. Preparing for what looks to be his final NASCAR Cup Series start, following a 22-year career behind the wheel, I saw him record 39 wins, 182 top fives, and 331 top tens from Cambridge, Wisconsin, driving into Credit One Bank, number 42, it's 2003 Series champion Matt Kenseth. 
For Team Penske, their trio of Fords rolls like this. Driving into discount tire number two, a throwback to his 2010 Xfinity Series Championship, looking to claim another title with his paint scheme, it's 2012 champion Brad Kislowski. Then driving into Menards Richmond Water Heaters number 12, it's Ryan Blaney, and looking to chase down his second title, driving into Shell Penzo number 22 Ford, this is sliced bread Joey Logano. For the Richard Childress Racing Stable, their duo of Chevys looks like this. In the Dow Chemicals number three, this is driver Austin Dillon, and in the IM second, number eight, this is rookie driver Tyler Reddick. The Stuart Haas Racing Stable brings their four Fords like this. Driving into Bushlight, number four, nine-time winner this season, the driver who's dominated all season long, the closer Kevin Happy Harvick. Bend into Smithfield Hometown Goods, number 10 Ford, this is A-squared Eric Almarola. Making his 541st and final NASCAR Cup Series start, returning to the track where it all started back in 2005. Driving into number 14, Rush Truck Centers Ford, this is Emporia, Kansas' Clint Boyer. Before joining the Fox Sports booth beginning next season at Daytona, Boyer looks to cap off his career on a strong note, a career spanning 16 years with 10 race wins, 82 top fives, 226 top tens, and many memorable moments along the way. And capping off the Stuart Haas Racing lineup in the HaasTooling.com, number 41, your rookie of the year is Cole Custer. The Ross Shenley Racing Stable brings their two Fords like this. Driving into guaranteed rates, number six, this is the Rocket Man Ryan Newman. And for the Fast Nail, number 17 showing off the 2021 paint scheme a couple weeks early. This is Prosper Texas's Chris Busher. The Tommy Baldwin Racing Stables in action with the Victory Lane Engine Oil number seven Chevy. This has driver Garrett Smithley at the wheel. And then for the Hendrick Motorsports Stable, their quartet of Chevys roll like this, all paying tribute to seven-time series champion Jimmy Johnson, who makes his final start this weekend. Looking to chase down the title, driving in an Napa Auto Parts number nine. This is Dawsonville, Georgia's Chase Elliott. Then driving in the Exalta number 20. 24, we have William Byron, looking to put a storybook ending to a legendary 20-year career, making his 686th and final NASCAR Cup Series start, driving into Ally Bank, number 48 Chevy, from El Cajon, California, this is 83-time race winner and record-tying 7-time Series champion Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy caps off his NASCAR legacy this weekend, following 231 top fives, 373 top tens, and 36 pole awards before he gears up to head part-time Indy racing and a two-year contract signed with Chip Ganassi Racing to drive into Carvana-sponsored Honda entry, retaining the legendary number 48. And making the final start for the number 88, driving into Chevy Goods entry, this is the hometown kid from Tuscone, Alex Bowman. For Joe Gibbs Racing, their quartet of Toyotas roll like this. Chasing down the title, looking to deliver in the FedEx office, number 11, this is Denny Hamlin. Then driving into M&M's number 18, defending series champion Kyle Busch. And at the way of the Bass Pro Shops, number 19, MTJ Martin Truex Jr. Making his final start for Joe Gibbs Racing at the wheel to DeWalt Atomic Tools, number 20, this is the Jones boy, Eric Jones. Then for Jermaine Racing, in their final start as a team, driving into Geico, number 13, this is Ty Dillon. For the Rickway Racing Stable, their quartet of entries roll like this. The Gotel, number 15, has rookie driver Brandon Poole. Then in the Fat Boy Ice Cream, number 27 Ford, we have JJ Yaley. Driving into Donate Life, Nevada Donor Network, number 51 Ford, it's Joey Gase. And in the Caregivers, number 53 Chevy, a brand new sponsor for James Davison. The Wood Brothers bring their famous number 21 Ford Motocraft Cook Lane Tire and Auto Center Ford of Guido Matt de Benedetto. And then for the Go Fast Racing Stable and the Paula Casino, number 32 Ford, the final full time start for this team is seeing Super Shoes Corey LaJoy at the wheel. Then for the Front Row Motorsports Gang, their duo of Fords look like this. And the Love's Travel Stops, number 34, it's Michael McDowell. Driving into Fire Alarm Services, number 38, capping off his rookie season, this is John Hunter Nemechek. The JTG Darty Racing Camp brings their pair of Chevys looking like this, with the Honey Nut Cheerios number 37 having Ryan Priest, and at the way of the Kroger number 47, this is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. For the Richard Petty Motorsports Gang, driving into DoorDash number 43 Chevy, making his final start for the team, it's Daryl Bubba Wallace Jr. Then for MBM Motorsports, driving into Roof Claim number 66 Toyota, your 2020 eNASCAR iPro Invitational Series Champion, it's Timmy Hill. Spire Motorsports brings the Equest to bank. Number 77, Chevy. This has driver Josh Balicki at the wheel. And then for Levine Family Racing and their final start as a NASCAR Cup Series team in the Ream, number 95. Cap
capping off his rookie season in the Cup Series, it's winner here in the Xfinity Series, Christopher Bell. And for Gaunt Brothers Racing, driving the Peacock NBC number 96 Toyota from Monterey, Mexico, it's Daniel Suarez. Now let's have a look at your Speedway Collective Fantasy Picks, a pair of drivers out of each category that I expect to bring home solid runs to your fantasy team to cap off the season. In the A class, I like the looks of Kyle Busch. The defending series champion, while eliminated from the playoffs, comes to one of his best tracks. A top five run here in March. You got to believe he's going to be looking to close off the season with another victory. Keep an eye out on Rowdy. And he can't go wrong with a final four driver here. Joey Logano in that number 22, arguably my championship pick as he was the winner here in March. Always runs well here, has a lot on the line. Keep an eye on sliced bread as your A-class starter. In the B-class, I like the looks of Alex Bowman in the number 88. In 2016, he showed up here as a no-name kid filling in for the injured Dale Earnhardt Jr. And if you remember correctly, he sat on pole, led laps all day until an incident late in the race took him out. You know he's looking on revenge for that day, and he might just get it. Keep an eye out on the showman. And Eric Amarola driving that Stuart Haas Racing number 10 Ford had a great run here in the spring as well. Look for him to close off the season strong. On to the C class, I like the pair of Roush Genley Racing drivers. I've been riding them a lot these past couple weeks, but that's because this is the most consistent duo of drivers you can get out of your C class. And the number 17, Chris Busher. And the number 6 has veteran driver Ryan Newman, a winner here back in 2017. And then in the D class, I like your rookie of the year pick, Cole Cus has run well here in the Xfinity Series previously in his career. I expect him to show up once again. Had an okay run here in March. Expect him to turn that around. And Michael McDowell in that Love's Travel Stops 34 car always shows up on these short tracks. Phoenix, no exception. Keep an eye out on that 34 gang. Now, here's a look at your race stats as we gear up for the final race in the NASCAR Cup Series season where the field rolls for the 312 laps. 513 kilometers around the one-mile Phoenix Raceway. Stage 1 goes for 75 laps. Stage 2 that distance as well. The final stage will be 162 laps. This all utilizing the 750 horsepower small spoiler package as Denny Hamlin is your defending race winner. Don't forget to catch the 2020 season finale 500 coming live on Sunday, November 8th, 2020 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on NBC. Thank you guys so much for watching this NASCAR Cup Series race preview video. For more motorsports content, check out my newest video by clicking on the left. You can hit that circle in the middle to subscribe and take a look at that video on the right as well. It's one you don't want to miss. Continue the conversation with me on Twitter at Kemo Cup Series of another NASCAR race preview video. This has been Kemo on YouTube for the final time this 2020 season thing. Thanks so much for watching and for your support all season long. And we'll see you in Daytona 2021.